Kenyell William Brown was born on July 3, 1979 into a large family with several brothers and sisters. He spent his childhood and youth in the city of River Rouge, where he attended the local River Rouge High School. In his school years, Brown, who was physically capable and athletically gifted, became a successful basketball player. Regardless of his potential, he began using narcotic substances in his teens and developed a drug addiction, which caused a drastic change in his personality. He began suffering from poverty, and began leading a criminal lifestyle from an early age. Between 1997 and 2019, Brown was arrested and imprisoned several times. In August 1997, Kenyell Brown was arrested on charges of attacking a person with a weapon. He was convicted and given a year of imprisonment, which he served at the Wayne County Prison. He was released in 1998, but re-arrested the following March for illegal carrying of weapons and resisting arrest. He pled guilty, was conditionally sentenced to four years imprisonment, but in October 1999 was arrested yet again for the illegal possession of a taser and attempting to sell it. After this arrest, he began to cooperate with investigators in a plea agreement, agreeing to plead guilty in exchange for testifying against other inmates, so that the charges against him would be dropped and he could be released. In September 2000, Ken Yell was arrested for drug possession and attempting to sell them, but was released yet again after he provided some information on crimes committed in the county. In February 2001, Brown became the cause of an accident during which one person died and another was seriously injured. He tried to flee the crime scene, but was arrested soon after and charged with second-degree murder, resisting arrest, intentionally inflicting moderate injury resulting in death, driving without a license and illegal weapons possession. He was convicted and received 10 years imprisonment, but was paroled in 2010. In June 2014, Ken Yell was arrested in Detroit for illegal possession of weapons. During his detention, he called himself in his dead brother's name and stated that he was suffering from a mental disorder. In March 2015, Brown was recruited by agents of the Bureau for Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, working as an informant for five consecutive years. Based on the provisions of the Armed Career Criminal Act, he was sentenced to life imprisonment, but in June 2015, the Supreme Court recognized some of the law's provisions as unconstitutional, due to which Brown pled guilty and received 21 years imprisonment, with a trial period of two years. In February 2017, after serving 14 months in prison, he was released, but was re-arrested for parole violation in May of that year and returned to prison. Thanks to intervention from the federal agency, however, he was released in July. Over the following years, Ken Yell repeatedly violated parole conditions, but each time avoided criminal liability due to his position as an FBI informant. In July 2018, he was arrested for drunk driving in Lincoln Park, later testing positive during a drug test. In January 2019, he was once again arrested for drug intoxication, after which he was ordered to attend a narcologist regularly by the court. He missed four scheduled sessions, after which an arrest warrant was issued on February 22, 2019. Brown was arrested a month later and charged with violating his parole. In May, he was prescribed compulsory treatment for drug addiction, after which he transferred to a drug treatment clinic in Madison Heights, where he spent 21 days and was released on June 12. Two weeks later, he was arrested in Hazel Park for drunk driving, but quickly released on October 29 again as a result of intervention from federal agents. The murders began on December 7, 2019, when Brown shot 31-year-old Lauren Haddington in River Rouge. On January 30, 2020, Brown visited some friends from his youth, 48-year-old Dorian Patterson and his brother Gerald, with whom he drank alcohol. After Gerald left the house and went to work, 52-year-old Kimberly Green and 44-year-old Clifton Smith came by the house. Late in the evening, a quarrel occurred between the pair and Brown, who proceeded to shoot Green and Patterson, as well as non-lethally wounding Smith, who managed to leave the crime scene and report the incident to the police. Based on his testimony and that of Gerald Patterson, Ken Yell Brown was put on the wanted list. On February 18th, Brown shot and killed 49-year-old Garces Woodyard in Highland Park while trying to rob him. 
Two days later, 41-year-old Emir Thaxton was shot dead inside of his clothing store in Detroit, with his money, valuables, and caravan stolen after. Thaxton was familiar with Ken Yell. On the day of the murder, he was recorded visiting him on video surveillance, as well as his car, and on this basis, became a suspect in his murder. Two days after, Brown shot dead 36-year-old Eugene Jennings while trying to steal a car. According to the investigators, he was his last known victim. On January 8th, uh, there was a fatal shooting of a victim. Uh, and then later, on February, or, uh, I'm sorry. Somebody's talking, sorry. Okay. So then, from January, that was the first shooting incident. Where was that one at? Uh, that was in the city of River Rouge. And then on February 2nd, there was a second incident where there were two fatal shootings. Again, in the city, both in the city of River Rouge. And then on, on February 18th, there was a single failure shooting uh, in Highland Park, the city of Highland Park. And then on February 20th was the first shooting incident in the city of Detroit in Mount Precinct, single fatal shooting. And then on uh, February 21st, there were two separate carjacking incidents uh, within 19 minutes of one another. And so then it was the last one. Yeah, that's it. So what we're talking about is six fatal shootings, one non-fatal shooting, and two carjackings. And so two uh, shootings in the city of Detroit, uh, the remainder River Rouge. On February 24, 2020, Brown was seen visiting an adult bookstore in Oak Park. He was identified by two employees who called the police. Brown was unable to escape in time, as the police soon cordoned off several blocks and began a search operation to detain him. Brown attempted to sneak away by moving through houses, but was spotted by tenants, after which he was surrounded by law enforcement officers in a backyard. While trying to detain him, Brown attempted suicide by shooting himself in the head. He remained alive for another four days, but due to complications, he died four days later on February 28th. Yes, Alan and Glenda, the mother of one of Ken Yell Brown's alleged victims, wants answers, and U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider acknowledges that for a period of time, Brown was a law enforcement informant, and he says they are trying to determine exactly what happened. Did they know where he was at at all times? Did they know who he was associating with? Did they know what he was doing? If they knew all of these things, if he's working for you, why did my son get killed? Tracy Harrington's 31-year-old son, Lauren Harrington, is the first person Ken Yell Brown allegedly killed in what has been described as a killing spree that began in early December and ended days ago. In all, six people gunned down, and Detroit Police Chief James Craig coming out to say that not only was Brown the accused killer once an informant to ATF, but in late October, Ken Yell Brown became a paid informant for a DEA Detroit Police Task Force. What I'm getting now preliminarily is that our DPD officer assigned to that task force was unaware of these failures or violations of his release. Unaware. Again, had we known, uh, this is not a person we would have wanted to use. Chief Craig is talking about Brown's criminal history that includes gun and drug crimes and a messy list of probation violations that has a lot of people asking if he should have been in prison instead of free and listed as an informant until Kenya Brown was suspected in the murders of Kimberly Green and Dorian Patterson. I had a conversation with the U.S. Attorney Matthew Snyder. Uh, we both agreed that it warrants a deeper look into what happened in this case. You come to my house and you tell me why my son was murdered by a man that was working for you. Then I let her rest. And Kenyell Brown, we're told, remains hospitalized and we're told his condition is grave. Reporting live outside police headquarters, Kimberly Craig, some action news. Kenyell William Brown was an American criminal and prime suspect in a series of murders which occurred in three cities in Wayne County, Michigan between December 7th 2019 and February 22, 2020. 
On February 24th, his whereabouts were discovered, but during the arrest attempt, Ken Yell shot himself in the head. He survived his injuries and was taken to a hospital, where he died four days later due to complications, without regaining consciousness. Although he was never charged with murder as a result of his death, the media coined the nickname the Metro Detroit Serial Killer for Brown, since most of the killings took place in the Detroit metropolitan area. The killings caused a stir both in the city and the entire state after it was found that Brown, a dangerous recidivist, was recruited by law enforcement agencies and worked as a police informant. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.